Morning, everybody. Happy Monday. I am excited because I've got coffee, so life is good. Now, anyone who's been learning a language, especially to sort of the intermediate level and beyond, you will know that there's quite a big gap between becoming able to understand, let's say, a tutor or a conversation partner you're speaking to one on one in a sort of controlled environment, or maybe even, you know, looking at very simple texts or reading a dialogue in your textbook and then understanding real native content. So native speakers as they talk to each other, maybe a documentary, a podcast, an interview, native texts like novels or nonfiction books, or even just articles. There's quite a big jump and many, many people really struggle to just understand this myth. How in the world do we bridge that gap? Because it really does sometimes seem just unattainable. And so today we're going to be talking about my thoughts and my experiences on how to bridge that gap. And we're going to look at some of the downsides of these amazing new tools and technologies that we have to help us with language learning today. Okay, I'm gonna start with a one word answer and then we're gonna expand upon that. Essentially, the answer is struggling. Now, let me explain. We have so many tools and resources that have been created over the last 10, 15 years, even the last one or two years. And frankly, it's amazing. We are so privileged to be learning languages in this particular day and age. I've been speaking to a lot of people recently and listening to podcast interviews, all kinds of things, hearing stories about people who learned languages like Mandarin Chinese back in the 70s and the 80s and even the 90s. And, you know, the things that we have available to us today are astounding and they're so helpful. But the interesting thing is that there is also a downside to them, which is that a lot of those tools, they're essentially designed to help relieve the struggle of language learning, right? They're designed to make it easier for us to do certain things. And so we have tools that make it easier for us to transcribe something. It's now easier than ever to find subtitles in the language that the content you're consuming is written in. It's easier than ever to find pre-made flashcard decks on any given piece of software. So the point here is that many of these tools, they're designed to make our lives easier. And of course that makes sense, but it really does have a downside, which is that in my experience, and this is something I've tested with many, many students I worked with back when I was a language teacher and a coach for a long time, it's that there's something very special about that struggle that you have. And so I'm going to give you an example where when I was learning French, um, I would very often sort of find a way to get a French movie and I would also be able to find the French subtitles and that was amazing. Occasionally I would have the English and the French subtitles. And so it made it very easy for me to consume that film, all of its content, all the amazing language, all the phrases, all the words, all the idioms, the jokes, everything. It was there written down for me. And so there was no struggle, right? To get that essentially transcription. But the thing is that I remember watching a film called Paris. It's a really nice film and I really wanted to watch it, but I could not find the French subtitles anywhere. And I remember that I was quite disappointed, but since I really wanted to watch the movie and I didn't really have a choice, I decided, look, I'm gonna just do my best. So I decided to watch the film and I tried to do my usual sort of method. So I watched the film one time through. I didn't pause it. Um, I think I paused it a couple of times because Occasionally, I'm so curious. I'm like, oh, what, what? Did he just say this word or did she just say that? But by and large, I watched it through and it was very, very difficult. I would say I understood about 50%. And so in that 50% that I missed, there's a lot of very important plot lines, very important details. And so I, I had a general idea of what was going on, but there were some very core, like, principal ideas of the film that. I was confused about. 
But now that I went through that struggle on that first pass, I was determined, like I, I want to fill in those gaps. So what I did is the next day, I watched the film again. Now, this time I did allow myself to pause here and there. I was pretty moderate, but I certainly started pausing, started writing things down, looking up a few words, but I found the second time through, I understood about 75%. And I was just astounded by the jump in comprehension because now the second time through, I already had a certain amount of basic context. I already knew a lot of the other things. And so I was able to hyper-focus on just filling in the gaps. Now, again, I didn't spend a lot of time writing things down, but I did sort of like look up a few words, things that I felt were really key. And then the next day after doing some review, I watched the film a third time. And this time I was so absolutely adamant, determined to try and figure out all the missing pieces of this puzzle. And so I felt very much like a detective. And this time I, I, you know, I wrote down things. I really struggled to understand certain things. And I remember all these little breakthrough key moments that happened where I was like, oh, that's the connection because he's saying this and this happened. The point of this story is that in the end, I actually was able to understand 90 to 92% of this film after going through this process for a few days. But the level of improvement I experienced with my French comprehension was incredible. And I experienced this over and over and over again. For me, this usually happened when I wasn't able to find some way to make it easy. So like in this case, I wasn't able to find the French subtitle, so I just had to struggle through it. I have had this experience with Japanese podcasts. I've had this experience with French podcasts, all kinds of languages. It's very often been those times when I just simply didn't have a choice. I wasn't able to find any other way except just struggle so badly through. But again, there is something very special that happens when you do that. And it doesn't happen when you have something to hold your hand and take you through. And so, yes, you will massively improve your vocabulary. You will improve your listening comprehension if you have a nice transcript and you have a pre-made flashcard deck. But in my experience, this is what makes people achieve a very high vocabulary. They have a very high theoretical listening comprehension or reading comprehension. But when they listen to real people speaking to each other, when they watch a real film or a documentary, or they listen to a real interview, or they read a real book, even a simplified book, it turns out to be very, very difficult for them. Because the fact is that in real life, you just have to struggle. And I think this is really the essence of why living in a country in the end is an extremely effective method. I don't think it's the only way to do it. And I've said on many occasions on this channel and I've talked about many different methods for creating your own immersion environments, your own immersion bubbles. And I think that you can learn to be very fluent in language without going to live in a country. But I think the reason why living somewhere is extremely effective is that it builds in the struggle to your learning journey, right? Even if you have a really nice tool that helps you transcribe this movie or this TV show, or you have a short little like learning drama or a shadowing book, if you live there, you are inevitably going to struggle because you're gonna go out in your daily life, at least if you make an effort to speak the language, you're gonna just be forced to interact with people. You're gonna be forced to struggle through those interactions at the grocery store or in the taxi, where you have a very chatty taxi driver who just wants to talk to you or any number of things. And so I think that people who live in a country and who successfully immerse themselves linguistically and culturally, I think that's really the essence of why it ultimately works very well, is that no matter what tools you have, you will struggle and you'll struggle badly, but it'll get you over the hump. And I think that that is the key of why when we don't live in the country, right? And we have all these amazing resources, we can achieve very, very good skills. And frankly, that's great. But we do often get a bit discouraged and demoralized when then we think, cool, I've been working so hard on my German. I understand my textbook dialogues perfectly. I can read this simplified thing. And then we go and look at some native content and it's like, oh my God, this is so hard. So my message today is, like I said in the very beginning of the video, struggle. You have to force yourself to struggle. Now I'm not saying 
don't use all these tools. I think these tools are amazing. I use them myself. I wish there were more of them. I'm ecstatic. And I think even today, it's much easier to find those subtitles that I was struggling with a few years ago with French. So I'm not saying don't use them, but I'm saying I believe that at a certain point you need to build in a intentional conscious struggle to your language learning journey. You need to occasionally say, you know what? I'm not gonna use the pre-made deck. I'm gonna make my own deck. I'm gonna make my own flashcards. I'm gonna transcribe this myself. I'm gonna struggle through it. I'll get corrections, I'll find somebody, whatever it takes, or maybe I'll take the original transcript and I'll compare it to my own. Whatever it is, the point is that I highly, highly encourage you every now and again, and especially the more advanced you get, try just building in the struggle. Embrace it. And I, I promise you, it's gonna do such wonders for your language skills. And I've heard this story from so many people that they say, every time I struggle so badly through this certain piece of content or that piece of content, my language skills improve so much. And I think back to reading things like Kato Lam's book about language learning, very, very famous text. And when she talks about the process that she went through, reading novels and like writing notes all over the place and you know, dog earing them and you had a dictionary. She struggled immensely through all of those books that she was reading as an example. She didn't have all these special fancy tools that you could use today. And I honestly believe that it's it was that struggle. I'm sure it was incredibly impactful on her ability to learn languages so effectively. And so it's certainly been a key for me and it's something that I want to remind myself of more and more. Struggle. <laughs> okay, everybody, I would love to get your thoughts on this topic. I think it's a fascinating one. So please share in the comments, any experiences you have, any thoughts, how have you struggled in your language learning? And most importantly, how can you embrace and even induce a struggle in your language learning today?